Hi, this is Dr. Hayek and this video is about solubility and complex ion equilibria. In this video, we will be talking about qualitative analysis and complex ion equilibria. Let me remind you of the outline of this chapter where I will be talking about different topics. Please refer to the corresponding video for the topic of interest. Now let's take a look on this example for the selective precipitation. The question says, a solution contains 1.0 times 10 to the power minus 4 molar of copper 1 and 2.0 times 10 to the power minus 3 molar of lead 2. If a source of iodide is gradually added to the solution, will a copper iodide or lead iodide precipitate first? And the KSPs of both solids are given. So now, as you can see from the animation, I have the blue balls are the copper 1 ions and the gray balls are for the lead 2 ions. I will be adding I minus and the question now whether the copper 1 will precipitate first or the lead 2 will precipitate first. In order to answer this question, we need to proceed by order. So before that, we need to calculate the greatest concentration of I- minus that can be present before precipitation of each iodide, and then we compare it. So if we take a look for the copper iodide, the maximum concentration of I- minus before any precipitation, it can be 5.3 times 10 to the power minus 8 molar. Now this can be calculated from the KSP, as you can see in here. Now, in a similar way, we can calculate the maximum concentration of I- minus that can be present in the solution before any of the lead iodide precipitates, and we find that it's equal to 2.6 times 10 to the power minus 3 molar. So, looking at these two concentrations, we can see that the amount of iodide needed to precipitate the copper 1, it's very small compared to the amount of I- minus needed to precipitate the lead 2. And therefore, when we start adding I-, minus, the copper compound will precipitate first because it doesn't need that much of the I- minus to precipitate. Once we precipitate all the copper, then if we keep adding I-, minus, the lead will start to precipitate. Now this is called the selective precipitation. How this could be useful? Now we can understand this point more from the qualitative analysis point of view. So assuming I have a solution that contains many ions and I want to separate these ions, I can first proceed by adding HCl. Adding 6 molar HCl will precipitate the silver, the lead and the mercury 1 ions and the remaining ions will remain soluble in the solution. In the next step, I can add hydrogen sulfide and 0.2 molar of HCl. I can separate more ions like copper, cadmium, bismuth, lead, etc. And the remaining ions will remain soluble in the solution. In the third stage, I can add ammonium sulfide at a pH equal to 8. And here I can separate ions like aluminum, iron-3, chromium-3, zinc, nickel, manganese, and cobalt. And the remaining ions will remain in solution until that, in a later stage, I can just add ammonium hydrogen phosphate and ammonia solutions. And then I will precipitate calcium, the SR, Ba, Mg, and the alkali metal ions will remain in solution. This method will help me identify the ions I have in solution or separate the ions that I have in solution. For example, if from stage 1 I add 6 molar of HCl and no precipitate forms, this tells me that there's no silver or lead or mercury one ions in my solution. 
then I move on to the second stage, and so on. Now let's discuss equilibria involving complex ions. Let's consider the saturated solution of silver chloride where a dynamic equilibrium is established between the silver chloride solid and its ions, the silver and the chloride. What happens if I add ammonia solution to this solution? Now ammonia, which is considered as a ligand, will react with the silver ion to form the complex ion Ag NH32 all plus. Now the overall reaction happening is silver chloride plus ammonia will give the complex ion plus chloride. Now as you can see from this animation that every time the ligand takes the silver ions from the solution the equilibrium will be shifting to the right to produce more of the silver ions and therefore it will end up dissolving the solid. So this is a very important point that should be considered when studying solubility. You should always ask yourself, is the solution I'm adding will act as a ligand and therefore it will be forming a complex ion with the ions present in the solution and therefore as you can see from this example, the equilibrium will shift to the right and it will uh, lead to the complete dissolution of the solid. Now, we have examples of ligands as water, ammonia, chloride, cyanide, thiosulfate, and thiocyanate. And we have also examples of the complex ions that can form once these ligands are added to any other aqueous solution. I hope this video was helpful to you, so please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.